पाकिस्तान की तरफ से मैं आपको खुश आमदीद कहती हूँ देखते रहिए असलम नाजरीन हम दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के नए एपिसोड में आपको खुश आमदीद कहते हैं मैं मलिया गजन और इंतखब अहमद दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के साथ इंतखब अहमद आज यहाँ पे वैंकूवर जाम मस्जिद में है और यहाँ पे ओपन हाउस हो रहा है जो के पाकिस्तान कनाडा एसोसिएशन ने किया है यहाँ पे ये इंटरफेस सर्विसेज है डिफरेंट मजाहब के लोग यहाँ पे आए हैं और वो अपने इस्लाम को एक्चुअली अनरिवील करना है जो कि अभी पिछले चंद दिन पहले ये कॉन्फ्रेंस सरे में हुई थी तो वहाँ पे भी इस्लाम अनरिवील का टॉपिक था और उसमें डिफरेंट सियासतदान और डिफरेंट लोग आए थे और उन्होंने आके हमें जितनी सपोर्ट दी है आ, मुझे इसका बहुत आ, मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ उन लोगों का भी कि उन लोगों ने बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से इस्लाम को सपोर्ट किया इस्लाम से पहले वी आर ऑल ह्यूमन बीइंग तो अब जब तक हम अपने आप को ह्यूमन बीइंग नहीं सोचेंगे उस वक्त तक हम आ, एक दूसरे की मदद भी नहीं कर सकते तो आज हमारे साथ मुझे इसमेल साहब हैं बी सी एम ए के एक्स प्रेजिडेंट हैं और इन्होंने बहुत काम बी सी एम ए के लिए भी किया है तो आइए इनसे मुलाकात करते हैं और ये इस ओपन हाउस के बारे में इनसे बात करते हैं मुझे तो आप बताइए पहले तो चल अपना पाकिस्तान के नाजरी को आप वेलकम करें बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जी हमें मौका मिला है कि मैं भी कुछ कहूँ और मुबारक हो ये दिल अपना पाकिस्तान की प्रोग्राम चल रही है मैं भी देख रहा हूँ नेटवर्क नेटवर्क पर अलहमदिल्ला बहुत अच्छी प्रोग्राम तो आपको बताइए ये पीसीए ने ये इंटरफेस सर्विसेज कर रहे हैं तो इसके बारे में कुछ बताइए आई स्पीक इन इंग्लिश नंबर वन कि भाई द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग जो हमारी वक्त है ना अभी ये कैनेडा में वर्ल्ड वाइड जो हो रही है और काफ़ी सालों से हो रही है हमारे ऊपर इस्लामी फोबिया और हमारे हेट क्राइम हमारे सिस्टर्स को हमारे बहनों को जो तकलीफ होती है हिजाब पहनने वाले को और हम मुसलमानों को भी जगह जगह पर तकलीफ हो रही है ये इस कारण के जो करने वाले वो कर रहे हैं इस्लाम के नाम खराब कर रहे हैं इसी कारण हमें भी तकलीफ हो रही है और हम हमारी मकसद ये है इस्लाम अनरेबल इस्लाम अनरेबल के मतलब मकसद ये है कि भाई हम अंदर अंदर मस्जिद में हम तो सिखा रहे हैं वो तो ठीक है जो कर रहे कर रहे हम भी कर रहे थे बी सी एम ए में लेकिन हमें ज़्यादा ज़रूरत है कि भाई वी टीच एन एजुकेट द नॉन मुस्लिम डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इस्लाम हमारी 
हमारे कहने का मतलब ये है कि इफ वी टीच एंड एजुकेट एंड गिव नॉलेज उनकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग आ जाए इस्लाम के बारे में तो उसके जरिए से ये जो नफरत हो रही है अननोन नॉलेज नहीं है उनके पास उनकी ज़्यादा अंडरस्टैंडिंग आ जाएगी अंडरस्टैंडिंग होने से इन शह इन शही हमारी दुआ है कि वो समझ में आ जाए उनको कि हम भी एक ह्यूमन ह्यूमन बींग है हम भी उसी अल्लाह को मानने वाले हैं और उसी वन क्रिएटर को मानने वाले हैं नाजरीन दिल अपने पाकिस्तान के लिए और के नाजरीन के लिए इतना अच्छा मैसेज दिया है मुझे इसमाइल साहब ने इन्होंने ये कहा है कि हम जो अपने बच्चों को तालीम देते हैं वो अगर हम घर में ही देंगे मसाजिद में देंगे और ओपन नहीं करेंगे इस्लाम एक पीस का मजहब है और हम इस पीस को जब लोगों में फैलाएंगे नहीं तो कैसे पता चलेगा तो बहुत अच्छी बात की है दिल अपना पाकिस्तान इन सारी काविशों में अपनी कम्यूनिटी के साथ है पूरी दुनिया में हम चाहते हैं कि मुसलमानों का नेक नाम पैदा हो और मुसलमान जो हैं वो नेक नामी से पहचाने जाएँ तो बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया देखते रहिए दिल अपना पाकिस्तान अभी हम अंदर जाएंगे देखेंगे वहाँ पे तकरीर हो रही हैं वहाँ पे लोगों से मिलते हैं उनके इंटरव्यू करेंगे शुक्रिया बहुत बहुत देखते रहिए दिल अपना पाकिस्तान तारीख नोट कीजिए 14 अप्रैल 2017 कनाडा उर्दू एसोसिएशन होस्ट कर रही है एक बहुत बड़ा इवेंट खूबसूरत लहजों के शायर अमजद इस्लाम अमजद और जनाब अनवर मसूद हमारे शहर में अपने दोस्तों के साथ जरूर शामिल हों एक शाम अनवर मसूद साहब और अमजद इस्लाम अमजद साहब के नाम 14 अप्रैल 2017 रोज जुमा ग्रैंड ताज बैंकुट हॉल सरे में तालीम को हर मुसलमान मर्द और औरत के लिए लाजमी और फ़र्ज़ करार दिया गया है बदकस्मती से हम इस फ़र्ज को पूरी तरह से बवजू अदा नहीं कर पा रहे अब इतना रिलीफ कनाडा और गजाली ट्रस्ट पाकिस्तान ने मिलकर इस कमी को पूरा करने का और इस नए काम को आगे बढ़ाने का एक वसीला पैदा किया है उसके लिए मैं और अनवर मसूद ग्यारह अप्रैल से 25 अप्रैल तक कनाडा में आपके पास हाजिर होंगे ताकि हम इस नेक काम में इस खिदमत में कौमी खिदमत में अपना हिस्सा अदा कर सकें आपसे दरख्वास्त है कि आप इन प्रोग्रामों में तशरीफ़ लाएँ और इस सदका एजारिया में हिस्सा लें गजाली एजुकेशन ट्रस्ट जो है पाकिस्तान में पाकिस्तान के देहातों में जहाँ कोई स्कूल और मदरसे नहीं हैं वहाँ तालीम के फ़रोग के लिए बड़े खलूस से मेहनत कर रही है ये तंजीम जो है अब इस सिलसिले में कनाडा में कुछ तकरीबा मनद करेगी इकना के ताउन से और मेरी आपसे ये गुजारिश है कि इनके प्रोग्रामों में आप भरपूर शिरकत फरमाएँ और उनके साथ तान करें क्योंकि अल्लाह का इर्शाद भी यही है तावनु वल पिर के नेकी के साथ तान करें और इससे बड़ी क्या नेकी है कि पाकिस्तान में तालीम को आम किया जाए और ये जो प्रोग्राम जिनका मैंने जिक्र किया है इन अप्रैल के महीने में कनाडा में मनद होंगे मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि आप इसमें तशरीफ ला कर इन प्रोग्रामों की रौनक बढ़ाएंगे और पूरा तान करें
the opening chapter of the Quran. I begin with the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the merciful. All praise is for Allah, the Lord of the universe. The most beneficent, the merciful. Master of the day of the requital. It is only to you that we enslave ourselves, and only from you that we seek assistance. Take us to the straight path. The path of those you have favored. Not the path of those who have drawn your wrath, nor of those who have strayed. Amen. That we as community, as a diverse community as we are here in Surrey, we need to stand up together. But we can only stand up together and fight intolerance and discrimination and those issues when we start with ourselves. And I use this analogy quite often when I'm talking to young people and when I talk to my grandchildren. I said it is very interesting if you go into a room and you close your eyes and you listen to people talk you're not judging them by what you see, by what you hear. And that, I think, is a fundamental principle that we each individually must embrace. And I take it very seriously that what I think is what I end up being. And so if I'm thinking negatively about anyone or anything by what I see, as opposed to what I hear, then I'm prejudging that individual. I'm not really getting to know them. I'm judging them by the fact that they may wear headgear, or they may have a beard, or they may be different color. And I often feel if we could go around with our eyes closed, that might be kind of dangerous when you're driving or walking. But the reality is, if we can close our eyes as we start to dialogue and hear each other, we can come a long way of stopping judgment by the superficial and really embrace in our hearts and our minds what makes us the same. And I know I'm a person of faith and I make no apologies for it, but I know that I can do one thing. And that is to not judge others because they may not be of the same faith or the same color. That ultimately the beauty of life is that we have the freedom, here in this country especially, not in other parts of the world. And that's why countries like Canada need to continue to stand up and to talk about the values that we have, that we want to share. And one of those is to embrace people of all, all different walks of life, of all different faith groups, and to say, let us focus on what makes us the same. And when I sit down and listen to someone of the Muslim faith, a leader, a scholar, of the Hindu faith, of the Sikh faith, of the Christian faith, even people who don't necessarily have a faith practice as such, what do we want? We want peace, we want happiness, we want a future for our children and our grandchildren. We want a society that respects each other. That's, those are qualities that I see crossing every single faith group that I've ever come into touch with. And I've listened, and my eyes may have been open, but my ears have been even more open, and my heart's been open to hear what people share about what they want and I find time and time and time again there is more that brings us together than separates us and that's what we need to celebrate that's what I believe we celebrate in the great city of Surrey in the province of British Columbia and Canada 
is we have such diversity from all over the world. And coming as an immigrant, I look back and I'm proud of my family's heritage. And I continue to want to celebrate those things that are part of my background. But I also want to be able to celebrate the background and the cultures of the people I live in community with. And to have my heart and mind open to who they are as individuals. So every day I try as best I can, and you know what? I'm not always perfect. There are times where the words creep into my mind. They never pass my lips, but they creep into my mind. And my responsibility and my challenge to all of us is when those thoughts come in and we make those judgments, even though the words may never pass our lips, when they're in our mind, they affect who we are and how we respond. And so I challenge myself that it has to begin with me. It has to be part of who I am. Because if I stand up and say we as community must fight against discrimination and intolerance, it has to start with me. And it has to be true. And that we can stop the intolerance. And so it's important for us as Muslims, first of all, to, you know, reach out and talk to people from other communities and engage with people from other communities and show them, you know, there's nothing to be scared of. I'm here, I'm a human, just like you. You know, I'm someone's daughter, I'm someone's sister, I'm someone's best friend. I do weird things in my free time like everybody else. Um, I'm a person just like everybody else in this room. And so it's, it's important that we show people that because I can sit here and tell people, oh, Islam is a peaceful religion and blah, 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 for millions of years, but until someone actually connects with a Muslim and sees that, you know, you could talk from now until forever and no one's going to listen to you, no one's going to believe you. You have to make those connections with people. And to all the people who aren't Muslim here, if you know a Muslim and you have any questions, please ask them. I have friends, I have more non-Muslim friends than Muslim friends, honestly, and they're always telling me, you know, we have questions to ask you, but we're just scared that we might offend you. We don't want to, like, overstep any boundaries. And see, that's the problem. Because when you have questions and you don't ask them and they start to sort of just ruminate there, that's what leads to problems. We need to have this open communication and respect for each other where we can have these conversations, you know, openly, respectfully, and learn from each other and see that, yeah, we're different, but we're different in a good way. We can all bring something to the table. Um, so I think that is really what we need to do because as all these other speakers have mentioned, Canada is such a beautiful country. It's like you said, utopia. It's a beautiful place to live in and of course compared to other places like our neighbors down south, you know, there's no comparison. It's, it's a heaven. It's beautiful. But that doesn't mean we should stay silent because it, you know, if we do stay silent, there's a chance it won't stay that way or it could get worse or bad things can happen. And so we do need to start talking because when you love something, when you love someone, you tell them when they're doing something wrong. Just because I'm criticizing something that's happening doesn't mean I don't love Canada. It doesn't mean anything. I am more proud to be Canadian than I'm proud to be anything else in my life. But because I love this country, it is my responsibility, it is everyone in this room's responsibility to speak out when something wrong is happening, when something that is going against your morals is happening. Because this is our country, and, you know, it's our duty, it's our moral duty as its citizens to speak out when something bad is happening. And so I really hope that everybody in this room, just, if you can take one thing from what I'm saying, is just, you know, connect with each other, talk to each other, learn from each other. It, it's so important, you, you know, it's crazy how much just one conversation, the difference that can make. It can change your life, it can change anybody's life. A lot of people, don't realize that Islam is coming from the same source as the other Abrahamic faiths. People don't know that in order to be a Muslim, you must affirm your faith in the Bible and in the Torah. Otherwise, you're not even a Muslim. A lot of people don't know that in order to be a Muslim, you must also believe in Jesus and Moses and Joseph and all of the prophets that are mentioned in the Bible and the Torah. You're not even a Muslim until you believe in them and you believe in their message and you believe in what they brought to their people. So because the process of education 
has not completed. That, that cycle has not fulfilled itself. There are a lot of gaps in the understanding of people. And as the Arabic proverb goes, man is an enemy of what he knows not. And when we allow our lack of understanding about any given subject or a person or a group to overwhelm our understanding or knowledge, from there arise insecurities, fears, enmity and hate. I told people after the, the incident in Quebec that that young man who went into that mosque riddling people with bullets could have gone to the same mosque and asked a few questions. Could have gone to the same place and just made some inquiries. Why do you guys do such and such thing? And why do you believe in such and such thing? And, and what is your real position on what happened in such and such part of the world? What is your position on these issues? And if he had engaged them in dialogue, he would have, he would have come back with some beneficial knowledge and probably some friends. So it's a daunting task to try to educate the masses. It's frightening. But we feel that it's a necessity. We feel we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our children. We do not want them to grow up in an environment where they are frowned upon. They're marginalized or isolated. They're, they're considered to be a threat to society. We don't want our children to go through that. And so we stand in solidarity with all of the ethnic minorities and with the greater Canadian population. And we offer you this platform from which you can learn anything you want about the religion. And it doesn't have to be a seminar or a talk. It could just be a question that you have. And there's no harm in asking questions. And there's no harm in giving answers. Sometimes people on both sides are hesitating. The people on the asking side, as the sister mentioned, are hesitating to ask because of, because of some reason. But equally hesitant sometimes are the people who have the answers. So, Everyone has some positive traits and some negative traits. That's just how we are. That's what makes us human. But the Qur'an here directs us to look for the positive traits that we may be missing to find them in other people. And if we look with that eye, with that intention, we will find those traits. And if we look with an eye of contempt, then we're going to see enemies. We're going to see, we're going to see walls. We're going to see barriers and obstacles. So the Qur'an wants us to open up our eyes and start seeing the good that exists, that God has scattered throughout mankind. And to be able to appreciate this ayat, this verse also tells us, so that you can appreciate the good that other people have. And then you go and try to achieve it from them. And you can only achieve good from people when you go up to them and you interact with them and you become friends with them. And then you take from their good qualities. I mentioned that I don't want to I don't want to have my kids grow up in an environment where they are being belittled or they're being isolated. And even though the majority of the people in Canada are well above, very, very well above that type of low thinking, there are some people who still go down that route. As I stand here, <coughs> I can tell you very plainly that I have been the victim of racial discrimination many, many times in my life. Whether it means just being bullied by words, or being physically beat up, or being insulted with all kinds of abusive language on the street. It takes many forms, it takes many shapes. Being jeered at and laughed at because of the color of your skin, or because of what you're wearing on your head, or because of the clothing you happen to be wearing. It's out there, it exists. I can attest to that. But we never let that break us. And we never let that intimidate us. And we never let that allow us to think even for a moment that I have to change who I am in order to live here. Because if I have to change what I am in order to live here, then this is not the Canada that I thought it was. 
And I choose to believe that this is the Canada that I thought it was. And I choose to believe that we have a very strong justice system. And I choose to believe that we have equal rights. And I choose to believe that I do not have to change any of my religious beliefs or practices in order to live here. And I would like to think that all of you are in the same position irrespective of what religion or faith you subscribe to. The issues, the religious issues, the what, whatever it is, how do we leave behind the bad? What caused us to immigrate to Canada? But to cherish and keep the good, what made us good? Your cultures, there's so many good things that every single person from every single country and every religion and every walk of life, there are so many good things. But what divides us is we bring too much baggage from the old country. But I tell you one thing, if all the common people working people get together, we can be victorious against Islamophobia, against Mr. Trump. I have a few ideas. When uh, Brother Haron invited me, he asked me if I would uh, share some prayers. And I think we've heard a lot of words and a lot of talking, and maybe it's good to do some praying. Similarly, there were these incidences that were because of our color or what we look like. And I want to say that for me, fighting racism, fighting discrimination is absolutely fundamental no matter where we live.